Being a reviewer who prides their work on producing more than the average outlet in terms of not only content, but the amount of benchmarks we do is taxing. And sometimes we get things wrong. And when we do, it's down to us and how we own that problem and explain it to you guys. So buckle in while I explain kind of exactly what went on. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. I'm never gonna be an esports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son, it is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. So to give you an idea as to what we do on a day-to-day -day when it comes to a GPU review, which is what this video is talking about, we test over 14 games at three resolutions. So without retests, that's 42 different runs. And with an average of around, say, four minutes per run, that's 168 minutes of testing. So two hours and 48 minutes. And that's not including actually changing the card, booting up and everything. And also that's if nothing goes wrong. If it does, that could triple that time quite easily. So then we're talking about eight hours and 24 minutes in total for one graphics card. Then factor in for our latest 7900 GRE review that we included 26 different graphics cards for. So that could be upwards of 218 hours. So essentially nine days of testing with no sleep. Now, obviously no person can do that. So I guess let's restrict that to an eight hour working day. And we're then talking just over 27 days of benchmarking. Now, obviously we've managed to speed things up by using our NAS for game storage across a 10 GB network with lightning fast NVMe drives in RAID so that we can test multiple systems at the same time. And we actually made a video on that and our kind of whole process and showed that we see no performance degradation while doing it, which as you can appreciate for accuracy is the most important thing to us. Now, the other side of testing is data collection, where we use CatFrameX for data capture, along with various games having built-in benchmark tools. Though sometimes we ignore them as, well, they aren't a true representation of a game, and instead we stick to a manual run. We then have a very complex and concise set of spreadsheets, which we put all of our data into. And then thanks to some custom made formulas, it takes that data and duplicates it into other cells. We also have a formula that averages all of our figures together to give us our overall averages across the total amount of games. In this case, it's 14 games, but sometimes it's upwards of 42 games. And we have different blocks of cells for each type of video that we do, whether it's a day one launch review, which has less games and sometimes less resolutions, or a head to head, which has more games and typically has more resolutions. So again, more testing and more likely that things could go wrong. So that leads me on to today. We had a lot of comments and posts on X and YouTube, and X still feels weird saying that and not Twitter, but yeah, about some of our results because they maybe don't line up with what other people got. And while there are variables at play, it's something that we've gone back and looked into to see if any mistakes were made on our part. Obviously different parts of the game, different settings, all sorts of different factors come into it, but sometimes there are just clear errors and that's kind of on us. Now that's why in our 7900 GRE or GRE review, we omitted our F123 results because we weren't happy with the data and are in the process of retesting, especially now that there is a new build, so it's been patched. The same with our Red Dead Redemption results, that while it wasn't used in our 7900 GRE review, we spotted a problem and we'll be making a follow-up video to this one explaining why things have gone, I guess, awry in that. So, the other one was a Plague Tale Requiem, though luckily we spotted the issue there before we published our 7900 GRE review. Though it was actually on the 4090 and 7900 XDX data, so it doesn't actually affect the GRE's data. So I guess the big question is, what was wrong with the GRE? Well, the cost per frame charts, and for that, I can only apologize. We put the wrong price for the 7900 GRE at $659, which was the original MSRP price when the card was a China only product. Now that it's launched in the Western world, it should have been $549. And this changes things quite significantly. 
Now, before we had the GRI coming in with worse value at $6.18 per frame, which put it worse than the 4060 Ti and only just ahead of the RTX 3070, which led us to say how it was okay value, but nothing great considering how much better the 7800 XT was at $5.08 per frame. With the new price, this does change things a lot as it now comes in at $5.14 per frame, which is only actually 6 cents per frame worse than the 7800 XT, and is now one of the best value GPUs that we've tested. We also changed the 7700 XT's price as this week it did see a price drop from $449 now to $419, and that also moves it dramatically in our standings and puts AMD in the top 4 spots, ranging from the 7800 XT, 7900 GRI, 7700 XT and 6950 XT and really gives, in, I guess, Nvidia no answer, other than the RTX 3050, which I won't even get into. Now, what I'm trying to say is things were wrong, and it was the same at 4K. Moving over to 4K, it's here where we had the GRI coming in at $14.93 per frame. So again, okay, but not amazing. And it did put it at better value than the cheaper RTX 4070, based on the GRI coming in at $659. Now that we fixed it and put the right price and changed the 7700 XT to its new price, things have again moved around a bit. The GRI is now coming in at $12.44 per frame, making it the best value GPU we've tested, and just ahead by 4 cents per frame when compared to the 7800 XT, which we've been touting as the best value GPU you can buy. Performance wise, it matches the 4070 Super from Nvidia, which comes in $50 more expensive, and falls 1 FPS behind the 6950 XT, which comes in at the same 599 price tag as the 4070 Super. So that's it really. An apology, a correction, and if we could edit our existing video to show this, then we would. But sadly YouTube, while it does give you the ability to cut parts of a video, it doesn't allow you to add things in. So we'll be posting a link to this video within the comments for that video. What that means for the GRI is that our overall opinion has changed, and instead of us saying how it's a tricky one due to how close it was to the 7800 XT, but for more money, it's essentially the same, but is even closer now. And that doesn't mean that the 7800 XT is better value, or the 7900 GRI is better value. Now instead, it's more of an opinion that they are both equally impressive in terms of value for money. But now I can say is that if you have $499 to spend, the 7800 XT is the one you should buy. But if you have $549 to spend, then you should buy the GRI. But to appease the Nvidia gamers out there and throwing it in the mix, if you spend another $50, you can get the 4070 Super, which will give you two FPS less on average at 1440 and identical performance at 4K, but will give better ray tracing performance and better upscaling. I guess what I'm trying to say is that we are finally at a time where things are comparable and there's choice. And the big winner in all of that will be you, the consumers. And if AMD keep going down this route of price cutting, it can only get better as time goes on. So yeah, again, apologies for the mistake. Hopefully this video has redeemed me somewhat and we are now taking actions to make sure silly mistakes like this don't happen again in the future. In fact, we've actually set up a special, call it VIP area on our Discord for certain Patreon members to help us fact check charts and videos before they go live. Obviously, NDA stuff we can't show, but content and figures for products that are already out, we can. And we'll be doubling down our efforts to make sure the information we provide is 100% accurate and that we don't fall into this messy trap again. As said earlier, we are also looking at retesting certain games that actually have their own errors and their own faults that I guess we're, for the most part, out of our control. And we will be doing a follow-up video to explain that in a bid that other people don't fall for the same mistakes like we did. This mainly comes down to Cyberpunk and Red Dead Redemption 2. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss that one. For now, yeah, that's gonna do it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And as I said, hopefully you guys and girls can forgive me and you know, the whole team for this mistake. I mean, most of it, if not all of it, as the owner of the company falls on me. As always, it's never intentional and I'm only human and mistakes do happen. That aside, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then you can help support us over on Patreon, where you can apply to be part of our fact checking team, along with getting other really, really cool benefits like exclusive behind the scenes content, bi weekly game nights, Patreon only live streams, and much, much more. The link is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye bye.